Hi guys, I want to do a quick video um, about overcoming heartbreak and disappointment. And at first I wasn't sure if it was something that I really wanted to talk about or share, um, but you know, God laid it on my heart. I was like, Lord, let's talk about holiness. Let's talk about warfare. Let's talk about, you know, staying in the fight. These are things I want to deal with. Okay. I don't want to talk about heartbreak and things of that nature, but however, you know what? God deals with every aspect of um, our lives. And so what I wanted to talk about today was how is how to get over those things and how I did by sharing a very brief testimony. Okay, so first and foremost, heartbreak is not necessarily just a, a result of an intimate relationship that has gone wrong. It's not just something, it covers a variety of relationships. So yes, it can be intimate relationships such as a husband, a wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, um, an almost boyfriend, girlfriend, um, a fiance, but it also can be hurt that you've experienced from your, your siblings, hurt from your parents, um, from relatives, family, could be things that you can, you can have experiences that you have at work because your heart is hurt and, 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 and things of that nature. Um, relationships that's simply platonic, you can experience those type of things. So the thing about it is when these things happen, it can, it can open you where seeds of, uh, contention is, is, is sown. And, and discord and contention and hurt and pain and you can find yourself carrying these things around and then you're not talking to people and you don't want to be bothered and then it's, you know this is especially important especially if you're a Christian because this will affect your walk as the word of God says if you don't forgive I will not forgive you the word of God says if you don't forgive your brothers if you don't forgive um, people for their trespasses and sins neither will I forgive you so that's sort of like a it's a no-brainer there, okay? There's no way around that. I've already talked about it in another video. So what I'm going to talk about is, one, I'm going to give you an example. So I um, ended up breaking off. A relationship was very, very important to me. Um, it was just, we had been together for some time, for quite a bit. Um, we had great plans together. But as things turned out, it just wasn't going to happen. So I ended up breaking off the relationship but with that being said I still had a lot of hurt and a lot of pain inside of me and so at that point I was walking with Christ um, was just experiencing different things at the time but ultimately I was walking with Christ and did have a relationship with the Lord so one of the things that I decided within myself um, I had to realize my role in the relationship how things happen how things happen his role in the relationship but ultimately, God always shows you you, okay? So my thing is I'm responsible for Arlene and my state of being. But the biggest thing was I'm like, Lord, I don't want to do things Arlene's way, okay? Arlene's old self, flesh, well, okay, if I break up with you, then look, there's always somebody else that's waiting on me and want me. Um, I'm going to go hang out. I'm going to go party. I'm going to go, you know, get me a drink and, you know, just this away. And, or, you know, just other means. I mean, my biggest thing was like, listen, somebody always likes Arlene, okay? So it's not necessarily, not even necessarily that I'm going to go sleep with nobody because uh, it's not that easy. But at the same time, you know, there's always someone that I can just be on the phone with or go chill with and whatever. So I did not want to even bring any of that in, into it, okay? So what my determination is and what you must decide first and foremost is when you want to do things God's way. You have to give everything to him. That's end of story. You're putting it all there on the table. The Lord, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. The very hairs on our heads are numbered, God. So God, guys, so God cares about the state of your heart. He cares. He collects our tears in a bottle. He loves us. You understand that? So you got to understand that, first of all. And I think that's something that we don't realize. We don't think God cares, especially if you feel like, well, you caused the pain. You caused the drama. You caused what happened. So I'm guilty. I want to go. The, the devil will tell you that you need to just go by yourself and do things this way. Mm -mm. Follow God. God loves you. So that was the first thing. I will tell you at the moment when that decision was made, I immediately feel the peace of God around me. Just like this. Like he was hugging me. Like he was holding me. 
And because I always had a prayer life and I was always praying, I was struggling in, in, the, in other areas, which that would be another testimony. But the thing is, I always wanted God from as long as I can remember. I've always wanted God. So when this happened, I remember praying about it prior to and just different things leading up to it. And I immediately felt like he had his arm around me. And um, I, I knew he was with me. So the first thing I did was get before him and say, Lord, your will be done. God, I want to do things your way. A lot of times when we're hurting and when things happen, we tend, we want to run away from God. But in this case, I was determined, I'm going to run to God. So I ran to him. And the beauty of it is what God allowed me to get in his presence. The first thing that he told me to do, I would wor I worship and I praise and I talk to him and I pray to him and I told him what, how I felt. And because when you break up with somebody, it's like, rip. And then, you know, it's not just like, all right, deuces, you know, bye, whatever, you know, doing all that, go on about your business, men don't care, wait away, you know, none of that. That was Jamaican. Um, but the thing is, there's still a void and there's still, your heart still hurts. So you can't just carry that stuff around and then you immediately get with somebody and you're still bleeding over them. You must be healed. So what the Lord had me to do was, number one, he called me to um, a fast. I fasted. I normally don't like talking about how I fast, how long, because I just don't like. But in this case, I'm going to share with you. Now, the time frame will be different for different people. And a fast may or may not be what God calls you for. But what he did, he called me to a 30-day absolute fast. I just had water. Okay? Just water. And during that time, I listened very carefully to the voice of God. And I made sure I followed very much what he told me to do. I spent a lot of time in prayer. I spent a lot of time in worship to the Lord because when you're fasting like that, you can't just be laying around watching TV, doing whatever you want to do, making your thoughts go all over the place, getting on the phone, talking to different people, entertaining different things because you open yourself up to demonic influences because when you are fasting, your spirit becomes opened up. So you must guard it. So that's why it was very important that I stuck to the Lord. I was pretty much in a place of um, isolation. I had the opportunity to do that. And so I was able to just be me and Christ um, during that entire month. It was 31 days that I was there. During that time, let me tell you, the Lord led me to read a lot of different books. But the most important book, the one that I was in day and night, was the word of God, the Bible. I don't care how good an author is, how anointed they are. This Bible, the word of God, should be the main meat and potatoes that you should be getting in and feeding your spirit. So in addition to the word of God, the Lord got me to these different books that I was reading during this time. I can't remember the order, but I believe the first one that I read was this one. It was by Dr. Miles Monroe, the late Dr. Miles Monroe. It's called the purpose and power of worship and praise. Worship and praise is one of the most important uh, part of being a believer. Most important part, excuse me guys while I move this, I'm so tacky, but y'all family, right? I don't need to try to be all perfect. The power of worship and praise. This is a book that I read about the importance of praising God, praising him in your, in your, in your darkness, praising him in your pain, Praising him in the midst of disappointment. Praising him. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now and worship. And this book was very helpful. The other book I read was by Dr. Joyce Myers. Well, I don't think she's a doctor, but Joyce Myers is called Beauty for Ashes. It is a wonderful book. Just what it says, when the Lord will give you beauty for ashes, strength for, strength for fear, gladness for mourning. And I might have just messed up those lines. But this was a very, very, very good book. I found it to be very helpful during the time that I was going through. And keep in mind, I'm not promoting any books or saying whatever, but I'm telling you what I did during this time. The other book I read was by Dr. Tony Evans. I don't know if you guys can see it. Dr. Tony Evans is called Detours. And it says, the unpredictable path to your destiny. Sometimes things may go in a whole different direction. What you thought was gonna, you thought these were supposed to go left, but they went right, or you thought it was supposed to go right, and they went left. You expected it to be this way. Sometimes God is in the middle of that detour. And one of the main people, one of the main individuals he spoke about from the Bible was Joseph, his life, all that he went through before he was put in a place that God had for him. So, very excellent book. Another book that I read during that time was called His Princess. 
and it's called Love Letters from Your King. This is by Sherry Rose Shepherd. It is a wonderful book. I was actually watching a CBN testimonial and this lady, um, she was going through some uh, a tough time in her life and she was talking about this is one of the books that she ended up reading. And it was a really, really good read. Basically, well, how the Lord instructed me, y'all may think I'm extra, but I made sure I forgot how do you want me to read this book. I didn't just read it like how I read these other books. So the Lord said, no, one day at a time, you read a letter. And if a lot of the stuff in this book did not hit home, it had me just snotting and bawling, but it, it, it was very, very helpful. And then finally, there was this one book. I was like, Lord, no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to read this. But this book was by Michelle McKinney Hammond. It's called What to Do Until Love Finds You. And, you know, I was just like, Lord, I'm not thinking about love. I'm not thinking about a relationship. But actually, this book is not really about that. It's not about finding a man, what to do to get your man, blah, 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 blah. It was nothing like that. This is just about, for one, recognizing who you are in Christ, recognizing your worth through Christ, how you see yourself, how you should keep yourself as a woman of God, the things that you do and you don't, the compromises you make and you don't make, the common mistakes made by women, the things that we think we should be doing when we shouldn't be doing it, how the enemy comes in and robs you, how you end up casting your pearls before swine, and it all really comes from fear, insecurity, or thinking you know better, okay? Okay, or following the the thing of this world was saying you gotta go and get your man. No, no, no. I'm not gonna go get nobody. I've never had to go get anybody. But even with that being said, guess what? Even if I didn't have to go get nobody, I still we all still need to hear the voice of God and do things his way. And if we feel we know how to do certain things. You have to follow God. So this was actually a good book in that sense. Okay, so I obeyed God. At first, I struggled reading it because I didn't want to read it. I'm like, Lord, no. I like all these other ones right here. But I I, I obeyed him, right? Because he knows best. And so I read these one, two, three, four, five, five books in uh, the past, let's see. I read it so between... Uh, August, September, October, November. I read those books in like five months. But the most important book I would tell you was this. The Word of God. The Word of God. I don't care how good all these books are. It does not trump this one. The Word of God. So it was being in God's presence. It was being in His midst. It was fasting, praying, worshiping, praising, getting before Him, hearing Him. And, and 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 laying before him, it's not a it's not a pity session. But God will listen to you, listen to what you have to say. But you during that time when you're fasting, what it does, it first of all it puts the flesh under subjection. So all your pride and all your ways and all your rights and what you think, it immediately is is brought under subjection and it opens up your spirit, man. So you are a patent can do it for the Lord. So you can hear him. Your ears, your spiritual ears are open. Your eyes are open. Your heart is changed. And it allows God to come in and make those changes in my life. And what happened is you cannot hold unforgiveness. You cannot hold resentment when God is, when your healing comes from God, when your healing is coming from him, God is not going to point out, yeah, yeah, this person, he was a jerk, she was a jerk, she should have this. God is God of is a God of order. God is a God. He's not going to promote you and, and promote discord. He's not going to tell you that you need to separate from that person. Well, in the sense of don't talk to this person, stay away from this person. You don't do this. You don't do that. And look at what this person do. He doesn't do that. If you find that it's happening, it's not of God. So the first thing God did was show me my heart and healed me. He even showed me of things that... Um, you know, things I experienced coming up, growing up, things in my life, events that brought me, he just, it, he was just a perfect psychologist. Let's just put it like that. And so in doing that, I was able to totally heal. He healed me. He healed me. He healed me. And I was able to look at the situation from a different perspective. And he even brought not only that situation, but other people to my mind and spirit, people who I thought I had forgiven. He showed me things that I had done wrong. He had me calling up different people and apologizing to them. That's the, that's the, that's how God is. You're like, wait a minute, God. I thought we were dealing with this situation, but you know what? We have a God who he's all knowing. He knows what's best for you. And a lot of times 
What God's going to show you is going to be about humbling yourself. And it's not about being a doormat. It is not about sitting there and allowing people to do things to you. God is not that way. But what he will do is let you be at peace. What he'll do is certain people do something and he'll guard your mouth and he'll tell you when to speak, when not to speak, when to let something go. And that is just the beauty of it. So whether, and, and, and that's not just relationships. There's been friendships. There's been things that's happened with people that I consider my friends that they have done that was wrong stuff that wasn't cool but guess what God said allow me to see a different aspect of it to see it from a different perspective to still be a good friend to still be kind but still he he taught me how to use discretion and 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 setting boundaries but in all of that ensuring that I still have his love and his peace and still have his character because you see, when you're ugly to people and when you're unkind and you go in and you want to hurt people and you want to hurt their feelings back, then you are in your flesh. But the truth of the matter is, it's not about mind over matter and mindset. You cannot do these things in your flesh. The first thing that you have to be willing to do is give all casting, all your cares, all your burdens, all your hurts, all your disappointments upon him. And allow him to do that. Because what you're going to realize, a lot of the times, those people that have hurt you, they're blinded themselves by their own hurts, disappointments. This is what they know. This is how they're acting based on their perspective on how they see things. And you have to just pray for them. And you don't want to hear that. You probably want to go ahead and just cut this video off right now. But you have to pray for them. And God will show you exactly what to pray for. But the biggest thing is this. You can't allow anybody or any hurt, any heartbreak, any disappointments in your life to cause you to lose your crown. You have to look at the end stories that God is causing the rain to causing the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. He's causing the rain to fall on that person just as he's causing it to, to fall on you. He's causing the sun to shine on them just as he's causing them to shine on you. And believe it or not, the Lord loves that person. The person you don't like. A lot of times I'm like, I got a problem with that, Lord. Like, really? But guess what? He loves them too. And if we really think about it, we can think of some stuff that we've done. I can think of a couple of things that I've done that was just straight wrong. Wrong. Yes, I said wrong. But he forgave us. And this is what we have to think about. How often do we disappoint God, the almighty God? We disappoint him. How often do we diss him how often do we throw shade his way how often do we know something's going to hurt him and we hurt him anyway and he forgives us right so the thing is in our flesh it is going to be absolutely difficult to try to do it we can't do it what you want to do is get them what you want to do is <laughs> okay but guess what we have to be in a place now where we're like, we want to do things God's way. I don't want no other way but God's way. I want to be his child. I want to conduct myself as his child. And so in order to get through pain, in order to get through disappointments, in order to get through heartbreaks, you have to give it to God. But it's not just giving it to him and just sitting there and not doing anything. It is in prayer, fasting if you need to. I like fasting. Fasting gets a lot of things, breaks a lot of yokes. So fasting, praying, worship, and talking to the Lord. First of all, going to him and ask him for forgiveness. If you're walking in darkness, you ask him to forgive you and you will hear his voice. And he will tell you exactly. Don't follow my lead and do exactly what I did because my formula may not be for yours. But the main formula is like, yes, you must follow the Lord. But as far as all the books he had me reading, my time in his presence, having me fasting all those days... Um, everything is different for everyone, but know that he loves you. He has a plan for you. If their door closed, there's something else. If you messed up, guess what? Get before him so you can get right. The biggest thing in all of this, we have to deal with these little practical things and things that goes on in our lives so that we can be focused and we can minister to other people. Imagine if I just sat down, was like, oh Lord, and took all that hurt and now I'm going to get this person back and I'm going to get that person back. I won't be able to be sitting here all bright eyed, looking pretty and glowing from the Lord, from his love. No. You know why that is happening? I can sit here and get the bigger picture and do this video and send it out because I obeyed God. And when you obey him, his way is always better. 
I have joy. I have peace. I am happy. I am, I am, I am refreshed and I'm determined to serve him with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind. So guys, get on board. Let go of the past and let him heal you. Have a great day. Bye.